Karl Joseph Wirth was a German politician of the Catholic Center Party who served for one year and six months as Chancellor of Germany from 1921 to 1922, as Finance Minister from 1920 to 1921, as Acting Foreign Minister of Germany from 1921 to 1922 and again in 1922 as Minister for the Occupied Territories from 1929 to 1930 and as Reich Minister of the Interior from 1930 to 1931. During the post-war era, he participated in the Soviet and East German Communist-controlled Neutralist Alliance of Germans Party from 1952 until his death in 1956. Chapter 1 – Early Life Joseph Wirth was born on 6 September 1879 in Freiburg im Breisgau, in what was then the Grand Duchy of Baden, the son of the Meskina Maester Karl Wirth and his wife Agat. According to Wirth himself, the Christian and social involvement of his parents had a strong impact on him. From 1899 to 1906, he studied mathematics, natural sciences and economics at the University of Freiburg finishing with a dissertation in mathematics. From 1906 to 1913 Wirth worked as a teacher at a real gymnasium in Freiburg. In 1909, he was a co-founder and first president of the Akademische Vinzenzkonferenz, a charity run by laymen for the poor. Chapter 2 – Early Career In 1911, he was elected to the Freiburg City Council for the Catholic Centrum. From 1913 to 1921, he was a member of the Badistia Landtag, the Diet of the Grand Duchy. In 1914, Wirth became a member of the Reichstag. His main focus was on social issues. At the start of World War I, Wirth volunteered for military service but was deemed unfit to serve for health reasons. He then joined the Red Cross. From 1914 to 1917, he worked as a nurse on the Western and Eastern Fronts. After contracting pneumonia, he had to stop. In July 1917, Wirth voted in the Reichstag for the peace resolution sponsored by Matthias Ersberger. Chapter 3 Revolution and Weimar Republic During the German Revolution of 1918 19, Wirth became finance minister of Baden on 10 November 1918 after the provisionary government replaced the Grand Duke's ministers. In January 1919, Wirth was elected to the Constituent Assembly which met at Weimar. At the time he described himself as a firm Republican. In April 1919, he became finance minister of the newly created Freistar Baden. After the Kaplutwitz Putsch of March 1920, when the government of Gustav Bauer resigned and was replaced by one led by Hermann Muller, Wirth became Minister of Finance of the Rye. He continued to hold this portfolio in the subsequent cabinet of Konstantin Fehrenbach but his task was to carry out the system of increased national taxation which his predecessor Matthias Ersberger had induced the Reichstag to adopt. When in May 1921 the Allied ultimatum on reparations was presented to Germany and the sanctions enforced on the Rhine, the Fehrenbach cabinet, which had rejected the London terms, resigned, and Wirth was called upon to form a new cabinet as Reichskanzler. He succeeded in obtaining the cooperation of a number of Democrats and Socialists, including the prominent industrialist and economist Walther Rottenauer as Minister of Reconstruction. Wirth himself retained the portfolio of finance. The new government then accepted the Allies' reparation terms, 132 billion marks payable in yearly installments of 100 million pounds plus the proceeds of a 25% duty on German exports. By the 31st of August 1921, Germany had paid the first half yearly installment of 50 million pounds, and in the following October Rottenau succeeded in concluding a comprehensive agreement with France for paying reparations in kind for the reconstruction of the devastated regions. By trying to comply with the Allied demands, the Wirth government attempted to show that it was impossible for the German Reich to satisfy all the reparation demands. The extreme right reacted to Wirth's policy by calling for his assassination. After the assassination of Ersberger on 26 August 1921, the conflict between the Berlin government and the Bavarian government of Gustav Ritter von Kahr came to a head the latter showing the same recalcitrancy against carrying out the special ordinances against plots as he had previously exhibited in regard to the dissolution of the illegal volunteer force, the Ain Wonaware. 
Wirth stood his ground, and von Kahr was compelled by his own party in Bavaria to resign and make way for a more conciliatory minister-president. The strife which arose out of this acute internal crisis had hardly abated when the announcement in mid-October of the decision of the League of Nations on the partition of Upper Silesia between Germany and Poland aroused wild excitement throughout Germany and sent the exchange value of the mark down, on 17 October, it was 750 marks to the pound. For his part, Wirth is recorded as declaring that Poland must be destroyed. Wirth had not concealed his conviction that the severance from Germany of the rich industrial district of Upper Silesia would fatally affect Germany's capacity to pay further reparation installments, and the political tension in Berlin again became acute. On the 22nd of October 1921, he resigned in protest over the partition of Upper Silesia against the expressed will of the majority of the population. However, on the 25th of October, Reichspräsident Friedrich Ebert once again asked him to form a government, which Wirth did on the 26th of October, forming the second Wirth cabinet. On the 16th of April 1922, Wirth and Rottenau signed the Treaty of Rapallo, which ended Germany's foreign policy isolation. After Rottenau was murdered by right-wing extremists on the 24th of June 1922. Wirth gave a speech in front of the Reichstag the next day in which he warned that we are experiencing in Germany a political brutalization that was characterized by an atmosphere of murder, of rancor, of poison, and famously proclaimed, the enemy is on the right. On 21 July 1922, the Gazette Schutz der Republik was passed on the initiative of his government, aimed at protecting the Republic against its internal enemies. However, by 14 November 1922, Wirth felt that the Afulong's politic of complying with allied demands had failed and resigned after his attempt to bring all democratic parties together in a coalition failed. In 1924, Wirth joined the Reich Spanish Wars Rot Gold, an organization that aimed to protect the Republic. When that Centrum joined the government of Hans Luther in January 1925, Wirth criticized his party for working together with the nationalist DNVP. In August 1925, he left the Zentrum Reichstag fraction in protest over the social policies of his party but retained his seat as an independent. In April 1929, Wirth became Reichsminister for the occupied territories in the Second Muller cabinet. After that government's resignation in late March 1930, Wirth became Minister of the Interior in the cabinet of Heinrich Brüning. Wirth was highly popular with the Social Democrats and acted as mediator between them and the new government. In October 1931, he was pushed out of office and replaced by Wilhelm Gruner on the personal initiative of Reichspräsident Paul von Hindenburg, who regarded Wirth as a leftist. Chapter 4, Nazi Era In March 1933, two months after Hitler was appointed Chancellor by Hindenburg, Wirth spoke passionately in the Reichstag against the Nazi-sponsored Enabling Act, which gave Hitler dictatorial powers. Wirth voted in favor of the act along with the rest of center parliamentary fraction on 24 March. After its passage, Wirth emigrated to Switzerland, settling in Lucerne and purchasing a villa there. He communicated with leading statesmen in Britain and France about the dangers of Nazism, and traveled to the U.S., where he met with the exiled former Chancellor Heinrich Brüning and gave lectures at Harvard University and Princeton University on the Nazi regime. Wirth resided in Paris from 1935 to 1939, when he returned to Lucerne. Subsequently, he made efforts to inform the Vatican about the threat of Nazi Germany's anti-Jewish policies, and during World War II, he secretly kept in touch with anti-Nazi Solf Circle and Kreisor Circle in Germany. Chapter 5, Later Life In 1949, Wirth returned home, after being prevented from doing so by the French occupation authorities for four years. He opposed Konrad Adenauer's policy of Western integration, for fear of making the division of Germany permanent. Together with Wilhelm Elfs, he founded the Neutralist Alliance of Germans in 1953, that was also supported by the SED, and the newspaper Deutsche Volkszeitung. Although Wirth did not approve of Stalin's policies, he believed in a compromise with the USSR in line with the Rapallo Treaty. In 1951, Wirth visited Moscow for political talks. 
In the CIA file The Background of Joseph Vieth, it is even claimed that Vieth was a Soviet agent. Unlike West Germany, East Germany paid Vieth a small amount of financial aid. In 1954, Vieth was awarded the East German Peace Medal. He received the Stalin Peace Prize in 1955. According to a CIA document Vieth claimed that he met with Lavrenti Beria and Erwin Respondik in Karlshorst, Berlin in December 1952. The document states Vieth, said Beria asked him to work for the East German government. He died of heart failure in 1956, aged 76, in his hometown of Freiburg and was buried in the city's main cemetery. Chapter 6, Sources Chisholm, Hugh, ed. Vieth, Carl Joseph. Encyclopedia Britannica. London and New York, The Encyclopedia Britannica Company, 